Welcome to DroneLink. Now let's create a mapping mission based on one of the templates. Start by clicking on the Create button and then select Map. You'll be asked where you want to place the map and you can use the search bar to find a location if it's not where you're already located. Click on the screen to place the map template. Let's give the map a name. We're going to create a map of this car park and also include a piece of the forest nearby. We'll change the default speed to 15 mile per hour and note that the action on finish is set to return to home. We're going to move the purple pin close to where we're going to be taking off. This is the assumed takeoff location and is used in the estimates to calculate the distance to the start point and also distance to resume points. Now we're going to change the shape of the area that we'll be mapping. We're going to cover the car park and some of this forest. Use this icon to change the flight direction. Now we're going to jump across to a mobile device to show that as long as your device has a connection, all of this information is fully synchronized. As you can see, once we open my phone, College Map already shows up. And I can edit it by clicking on the three dots and selecting Edit Plan. Once the plan opens in the phone, it's initially locked, but we can unlock it by clicking on the little padlock. And now I'm going to add another point and extend out the map to cover more of the forest. When we jump back into the web app, you can see that the changes that I made on the phone are already showing. Now we're going to click on the map and change the camera that we'll be using. In this case, I'm going to be using a Mavic Air 2S. Note that when I change the camera, the pattern changes to accommodate the new field of view. I'm also going to change the altitude to 300 and change the overlaps. Again, each time I make a change, you'll see that the mapping pattern changes to accommodate the changes being made. Now let's change the starting location. I want it to be closer to me so that I can easily see how things are going. And now we're going to click on Advanced and take a look at some other options that are available. By default, the capture mode is photo with a single photo type. The speed is set to 20 mile per hour, but for a Mavic Air 2S that's a little fast, so I'm going to slow it down to 15. The pattern is showing as normal, but we can also show a grid, which is a great way to do things like capturing 3D. If you're capturing 3D, frequently you need to change the gimbal pitch give a better representation. But in our case, we're just going to be doing an author mosaic, so we're going to face the camera straight down and we're going to just shoot in a normal pattern. Now let's take a look at some of the tools that we can use to check that the map is working correctly. Click on the 3D icon in the top left and a 3D representation of the flight will show up in the top right hand corner. Let's turn off the 3D map and have a look at the mission estimate. This includes things like the total time, the distance, the number of photos expected, the speed, and so on. For a more accurate representation, run a mission preview. This now allows you to run the mission virtually, showing what's going to be happening in the top right hand corner. It also shows information down below, such as camera actions, how many batteries you're going to use, flight altitudes, and so on. By clicking on the three dots, you can use toggle capture markers to turn on and off whether to show where photos will be taken. Now that we've run a mission preview, we can be confident in our ability to fly this, so let's get out into the field and do just that. Once on site, connect your drone and start the DroneLink app, and then wait for the button in the top right hand corner to turn green. This is also a good time to remember to force close the DJI app if you haven't already done so. Now click on the mission name to load it. And once loaded, you can click the play button to begin the mission. Three, two, one, starting mission. The drone will then take off, climb to the altitude set in the map, and then fly to the start point that we set when setting up the mission. Note that you can pause the mission at any time by pressing the pause button. Mission stopped and then resume from where you left off 
by just pressing the play button again. Three, two, one, starting mission. The drone will now fly the mapping mission, taking photos along the way. One of the most common situations when mapping large areas is that you'll need to swap batteries partway through the mission. Once a battery gets too low, it will automatically return to home. I've simulated this return to home by pressing the return to home key on the controller. Mission stopped. The drone will now return to home, land, and enable us to swap the battery. And once the battery has been swapped, you can press the play button to resume the mission from where you left off. Three, two, one, starting mission. Note that a purple line indicates the flight path back to the resume point. You can get an estimate of how much of the map is complete and how much time is remaining by checking the numbers next to the pause button. Once the mission is complete, you'll get a message saying mission accomplished. Mission accomplished. And then the drone is going to take whatever action you selected when setting up the mission. In our case, that was return to home. So our drone is going to return to home. And once the drone has landed, you'll be able to take the images off the SD card and process them in your favorite mapping software. One final note, if you're working in an area where the terrain is not flat, you're going to want to look at a feature called Terrain Follow. To enable that, click on the map and then expand the Advanced tab. Then click on the reference area and change it from Takeoff Location to Terrain Follow. You'll see that an orange circle surrounds your takeoff point and that is the restricted takeoff area. It's important to have a restricted takeoff area because calculations for the altitude of the drone for the rest of the flight will all be calculated from this point. Now when you run a 3D simulation, you can see that the path has now been adjusted to match the terrain beneath it. And if you're running a mission in the field with terrain follow on, you can see that the altitude adjusts as necessary to fit the terrain underneath.